Welcome to the first KNBC News Show for 2021. I'm Marina Diaz. Missouri Valley's plan to combat the number of COVID-19 cases on campus was to end the fall semester before Thanksgiving and extend the winter break to after Martin Luther King Day. Three weeks into the spring term, Missouri Valley has no active cases on campus. Weekly updates by KNBC had a trend of a single digit case count that started in October last year. This is the first time Missouri Valley's dashboard has shown a zero in the active case count. The COVID dashboard is on moval.edu. One of the tactics Missouri Valley is taking to help get students through the semester is a bit of a condensed schedule. KNBC's Adam Balkin reports on a break from the spring tradition. Schools all across the country are preparing for another wave of COVID-19. Colleges and universities are trying their best to educate students while fighting the pandemic. Missouri Valley College has taken out spring break to avoid students from leaving campus and potentially bringing the virus back. Assistant Registrar and Study Aboard Coordinator Kaylee Barnes says she would be upset if spring break was canceled during her time in school. Yeah, I would be a little upset, to be honest, if there was no um, spring break in my schedule. Um, I went to Missouri Valley all four years, and now I've been working there for almost two years. And yeah, the first sound that you hear, you don't have a spring break. You know, I'm sure many students were very disappointed. Um, I probably would have been too. Um, but you kind of have to think about the perspective. Um, there, your semester is now two weeks shorter. Um, than it usually is, it's 14 weeks instead of 16 weeks. Um, and part of that also might be that students may not know is, um, you know, in order to qualify for the classes that we're taking, you do have to be face-to-face -face class for a certain amount of days um, in order for us to stay accredited through the Higher Learning Commission. Although it may seem that this pandemic will last forever, some students have high hopes that hopefully everything will get back to normal. Hopefully, um, you know, we have been a pandemic for a whole, basically a whole year now. So hopefully we'll get things under control. Like I know that everyone's trying to, but hopefully if it does get under control, we can go back to having normal school year, you know, with a spring break, with a fall break, just stuff like that. Adam Balkin, KMVC News. Missouri Valley College offered the Malcolm Center to the Saline County Health Department and Fitzgibbon Hospital as a vaccine distribution location in the early days of February. Sharon Hoflicker received the vaccine on February 1st here at the MVC vaccination event. Hoflicker said that besides a sore arm, she hasn't had any side effects and she is excited to receive her second round. Quick. Quick and easy, after our, um, our vaccination, we had to sit and wait about 15 minutes before we could leave to make sure there was, there was no reaction. The ambulance uh, district was also there, just in case there was an issue with someone, but I don't think there was with anyone that I've heard of. It was just a really good collaborative effort within our little community, which is great. Kendrick Rivera said he would not be willing to receive the vaccine and has his reservations about Valley holding vaccination site on campus. As far as the school being a vaccine location, um, I mean, if that's their prerogative, that's, uh, that's what they can do. Um, personally, I would like it to not be on campus. I don't know, kind of poses a little bit of a health risk in my opinion. Uh, we don't know who's coming in, who potentially may have you know, corona or whatever, who may pass it on um, unintentionally. Um, but again, I'm just a lowly student here in Missouri Valley. Valley is allowing the Saline County Health Department and Fitzgibbon Hospital to hold another vaccination event on February 8th and 9th in the Malcolm Center. KNBC's news detailed throughout the fall the ways Missouri Valley College tries to keep students safe with hybrid classes and smaller class sizes. The reduced number of seats in classrooms also means a reduced number of seats in the computer labs. KMBC's Erica Moreno reports on how getting through the reduced availability on, of public computers requires a team effort. This pandemic has made it hard for some of us to get around. However, in Missouri Valley College, nothing is impossible. The librarians have made it an easy and safe place to get around with all the COVID guidelines being applied. 
They are constantly sanitizing and making sure that everyone is maintaining social distance. We pretty much took tables apart. We moved computers around. We allowed access. We got our rulers out and did six feet different so that the students could uh, have availability to the computers. And we only lost maybe one or two between both of our buildings. So both the commons and this library still have computer access. They are constantly keeping count of everyone in the library and everyone has done a good job at wearing their mask. Another department who might have been affected by the COVID protocols in the computer aspect was the fine arts division. So as you know, we have a maximum number of people that can be in the room and uh, the number currently is 10. And uh, in all of the graphic design classes currently, uh, the student enrollment is under 10. He has made sure to wear gloves when needed. McJilton has made it a class thing to wipe down the computers and sanitize after every class he has, therefore making it a safe space for the students. Social distancing is one of the main ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But KMBC's Leland Harvey reports studies show that too much separation can have negative effects. The pandemic has caused Valley to come up with multiple solutions to meet quarantine guidelines. To help social distancing, Valley and other colleges have prohibited students from being in each other's dorms until further notice. Isolation is a major cause of depression and Valley students may feel isolated without being able to visit each other. Valley student and residential assistant John Pelushi gives his opinion on mental health and the pandemic from a student point of view. I believe that social distancing has been good for our, not mental health, but our physical health because it keeps us healthy. I, don't, I haven't seen too many cases in our school, but about our psychological, I think it has been a good and everybody has been understandable because it's not something that is happening only here to us, but it's happening all around the world. And I don't believe it's been a big issue because people that came from outside of the United States, they've been quarantined. So at least here they could speak to each other and meet each other. I don't think it's been okay. Students are seeing hard times due to the pandemic and many are seeking counseling here at school to help. Teresa Soselski is the director of the Counseling Center and a counselor here at Valley. She says that the virus is affecting everyone in some way. Well, personally, I don't think anyone has not been affected by this COVID pandemic. We may not all have had loved ones that have, you know, died from COVID, but there's been a lot of people who have had COVID. And it's just the fear, too, of having a student come in and maybe they're being far from home and they're like, I just received a call and now my dad has COVID. And it is very anxiety producing for that student because if you're, you know, clear around the other side of the world, you're not going to hop on a plane and run home. And a lot of times you're going to have a problem getting home, too, if the pandemic is worse. So there has just been a tremendous amount of anxiety with students, not only worrying about their own health, but mainly worrying about people back home. There's no telling when the virus and pandemic will subside, but now more than ever, it is important to check on loved ones. We are all affected by COVID-19 in some way. Pay attention to you and your loved one's mental health. Leland Harvey, KMVC News. It's been quite a start to the year for the Vikings, and here to join me to talk about sports is Cooper Bryant. There have been some rescheduled games already this season, but first up, the men's volleyball team, the Vikings men's volleyball team, handed the Spartans of Missouri Baptist University their first set losses of the season in a 3-2 home win last week. The Vikings stepped up to the challenge and were led in the soaring by Simon Jolly and Nikita Karpushev. Jolly ended his night with 18 kills and 10 digs for the Vikings, while Karpushev tallied 17 kills. The Heart of America Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Week, Joao Vitor Bonanoni, continued his defensive hot streak with 17 digs to lead the Vikings defensively. Bonanoni and Jolly are this week's Men's Heart of America Volleyball Players of the Week. The Missouri Valley women's basketball team finished their last home game of the season off with a 74-55 win over the Culver Stockton College. And it would be Chanel Tolley, the Chanel Tolley show on what was her rescheduled senior night. She would take over the game for the Vikings with a 22-point night. 
Vikings forward Ariel Miller would follow up with a 20-point evening, and Shalina Harper would go 5 of 9 from beyond the arc to secure an 18-point performance. But it was Chanel Tolley who stole the show in the end, as she would record, as she would record her 1,000th career point with just four, more than four minutes left in the contest. She becomes the first Viking to top 1,000 points since Bonnie Johnson and Teresa Giddens in 2008. COVID-19 has made sports at every level across the world difficult to take place. KMVC's Shea Wilson reports on how Missouri Valley and the NAI are proceeding with performance sports seasons. While performance sports can be seen on the sidelines, the competitive seasons take place with behind the scenes practices. Competitive cheerleading and dance take place in close proximity to teammates and traditionally close to spectators. The NAI has taken to virtual competitions during 2020-2021 season to be an option. Missouri Valley College dance coach Kelby Hogan speaks on how performing without a crowd would affect her athletes. So competitive dance is a performance-based sport, which means as we are performing, my dancers are feeding off of the energy from the crowd. Obviously when we switch that to a virtual platform, that piece is missing, so then my dancers are relying on each other more. Virtual competitions are already instantly taking place. The pandemic continues or worsens, then competitive dance is ready to flip over to a virtual platform instantly. Missouri Valley College cheerleading and dance started their season with a three-day back-to-back weekend of competitions, of which only one team, Central Methodist University, competed virtually. Shea Wilson, KMVC News. Super Bowl 55 had a distinct martial flavor, and it goes beyond the dejected Kansas City fans on campus. Brad Berlin, the head equipment manager of the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and while Berlin spent a couple of decades in major college and NFL equipment rooms, he started his career as a student athlete at Marshall High School under head coach Cecil Naylor. I decided a long time ago I wanted to be a support person. I wanted to be a part of a team and contribute and help, but support, support coaches, support players, you know, help them achieve a common goal. I mean, yeah, we're all going to the Super Bowl, but my, my role here is to support these athletes and these coaches to do what they need to do and get done what they need to get done. That's my job. Berlin grew up a Missouri Valley Vikings fan and had a chance to work on the staff for Ken Gibbler. But Naylor helped Berlin get on the equipment staff at the University of Missouri. Berlin's first NFL job was with the former Chiefs head coach, Marty Schottenheimer. In Washington, Berlin says his upbringing in small Marshall is the reason he's accomplished what he has. One last note, the men's basketball game and what was senior day that is scheduled for February 6th is now slated for February 17th. Video is on the Viking Sports Network. Thanks, Cooper, and that's KNBC News. Our next show is February 23rd. Thanks for watching. I'm Marina Diaz.